Hello, welcome. I'm Philippe Leitao. I'm composer, music producer, and professor at Virginia Commonwealth University. If you came to this video, this video is part of a sequence of videos where I show how to build your orchestral track using only virtual instruments. So check the playlist here. I'm going to show from the very beginning, from just a simple track with just melody and harmony until a full orchestra. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to receive notifications. So let's go. So now we're going to copy just one more time that to here. Why? We're going to make that even more full. So now with brasses, I'm going to bring the melody to trumpet. Let me see if I can bring the horn here a little bit before we really have like the full orchestra. So I was just improvising. I was trying to create some counter melody based on the harmony. I'm gonna do it again. I think that's that's okay for now. So I'm using the notes of the harmony. guys to keep in mind with orchestral instruments is the piano roll. Since I was playing, uh, I'm basically doing some different dynamic, right? But you have some sound, like good sample libraries brings different sounds for different velocities. Let me show you here using the core version. Let me load here a uh, horn. What I'm talking about is if you play You see the timbre? And then if you really raised raise the, the modulation or the module wheel, that's gonna sound much more brassy. So we can really do a dynamic uh, kind of like very lost um, crescendo. That kind of like swell which is very common, especially for uh, brass instruments. I'm going to duplicate that and have... So now I'm going to automate this, which is the module, right? Modulation. So that's not only like change the volume, but also change the timbre, check that.
it's not only about the volume. So that's really important to make your orchestral uh, sounds sounds more real. And especially long notes, I mean any orchestral instrument, what makes that sound real is you automate that long note for brasses, woodwinds, and strings. So, I mean, it's not common to have a player playing a violin like da, a long note with the same dynamic. Usually, we have that kind of arc. We have, we have a crescendo, the crescendo, that kind of arc. I'm gonna create a crescendo here. Ah, here I think it would be really nice to have a really big crescendo. And that's not volume automation, that's different. Kind of like creates a swell, right? You change the timbre. If I do volume automation, that can also help. And then another good tip here, I'm placing all that instruments around something below zero dB. So I have room to increase the volume if I need, right? Crescendo, the crescendos. Check that. So that's about expression. So you need to automate the, the expression to make that sound more real. So let's check that in context now. So it's also good to create a counter melody, so you don't have every, every, everything like the same. You have melody and just like static accompaniment, static harmony. So if you have a counter melody, and I, you saw how I did that, basically just based on the chord notes, right? Well, next step, how I can make that really fuller? I think what it could be good to use um, is also a different, different texture. So all the instruments are just playing legato, legato, legato throughout. How about if we have something, some, some, some instruments playing staccato? I think that's going to sound better and that's going to cut through all that ensemble, right? So let's see that tenor trombone playing. I'm going to switch that to staccatissimo. like that. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. The rhythm. I think that's what I what I meant. Dun, 
that's E minor. And uh, also another thing to keep in mind. No same velocity throughout because nobody plays like that. So since I wrote that, uh, you need to go back and then change it. So E minor, and then go to C major here. Um, so what do I need to do here to move just a little bit? Is move that. Just a Maybe create some variation. Let's see. And the next one is going to be the G major. You do that. Dum, 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 bum, and have a swell. How about that? Look up that. And then now I'm going to go major. Da, have a swell. So we need to create a crescendo here. Um, and like keep sustain the same note. So I need to start with staccato and then have some things sustained here. So how to do that? I'm going to open here my BBC. You see here we have two types of articulations, right? We have long and we have staccatissimo. So how I can switch that? If you see here that keyboard icon, I can move some of that, like let's say green notes, and I can move whatever I want. So I'm gonna make that here. And that are my key switch. So that means if I play, if I put a note here on that, C0, that's gonna tell the program that it should be staccato. And then here staccato, and then that should be long. Yeah, so that's also important to, to create different articulations. Why I'm doing that? Just to cut through all that legato notes, right? And I'm going to do the same with the bass trombone. But of course, like playing a different note. So if the tenor trombone is playing that, I'm going to have the bass trombone playing this, which is C, and then G, the same rhythm. And then I can delete that. Now let me double check the key switch. Okay, I'm gonna keep here. Oops. So C0. Well, C sharp is gonna be staccatissimo. And C0 is gonna be legato. So now we have. And then if I solo the brass instruments, we're gonna do the same here and then cop the tenor trombone doing the same rhythm. And then here it should go to A major, right? Is that the same what the horn? No, the horn is playing E, A. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So now the bass trombone. Let's 
check that in the context and then see if that idea of have a different rhythm uh, works nice. To bring more movement inside the, the orchestra actually. Not only have contrapoint, contra melody with the horn, but I have another other instruments play a different rhythm, so that brings kind of like more movement inside the orchestra. So I'm gonna play from here. this video helped you how to understand the process of orchestrating using only virtual instruments. If you have any questions, please drop a comment below. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm always here to bring original and new helpful content on music production, media orchestration and film scoring. See you in the next video.